I hereby award you the title of Big Boss. The greatest achievement in a Metal Gear game is receiving the highest elite rank at the end of a playthrough. In order to achieve these ranks, players must play on the hardest difficulties while also making sure to adhere to the max rank restrictions. Usually, these restrictions challenge players to stay undetected the entire playthrough, avoid dying even once, forbid killing any enemy, while also restricting players from using any health restoration items. To top things off, players are also expected to complete the game in a certain time frame and only save a limited amount of times. Again, all of this is expected while also playing on the hardest difficulties these games have to offer, which means more guards populating each map that are all equipped with better eyesight and better hearing, bosses with the potential to one-shot you, and only non-lethal weapons and CQC as your methods to dispose of enemies. Most Metal Gear players don't even touch the hardest difficulties, even less can actually get through the game while playing on these difficulties, and even fewer players can get through the game on the hardest difficulty and within the max rank parameters. With that in mind, it's important to note that not all Metal Gear Max ranks are created equally. Some are much more doable with much looser restrictions compared to their counterparts. The game we are covering today, however, is by far the hardest game to master and achieve Big Boss rank in. In order to thoroughly explain just how hard Metal Gear Solid 2 is to master, we need to take a look at some of the other Metal Gear games as a reference in terms of difficulty. Let's take Metal Gear Solid 1 and Metal Gear Solid 3 and use them as our reference points. Metal Gear Solid 1, despite its aging controls and fixed camera perspective, aspects of the game that players might struggle with initially, when it comes to rank restrictions, it's pretty fair in terms of its expectations from players. In order to achieve big boss rank in Metal Gear Solid, players must play on extreme difficulty while making sure to stay under 3 hours of total playtime, making sure to kill no more than 25 enemies, remaining at 4 alerts or less, with 3 of them being mandatory, you can only use a maximum of 1 ration the entire playthrough, no continues at any point, and anywhere between 0 and 80 saves. It's also important to keep in mind that the first Metal Gear Solid allows the use of special items during a max rank playthrough. The bandana and stealth camouflage can both be used as many times as the player wants, without penalty and without ruining big boss rank. Overall, Metal Gear Solid's top rank is not extremely difficult to achieve. The player being allowed 80 saves means they have more than enough opportunities to save when they feel the need to. This is one of the biggest determining factors in regard to how difficult an elite rank will be to achieve. The less saves you are allowed, the better you have to play, and in turn, the higher the difficulty will be. Keep this bit of information in mind as we move forward. Let's now compare Metal Gear Solid 3's max rank requirements. Players must complete the game on extreme or European extreme difficulty in under 5 hours with zero continues, zero alerts, no kills, no life medicine used, which is the equivalent to a ration in this game, while making sure to take less than 10.5 life bars of damage, and finally, with 25 or less saves total. Also, remember that special items like stealth camo cannot be used at all during a max rank run in MGS3, unlike in MGS1. As soon as you equip any of them, your elite rank is ruined. Now you might have noticed that in some aspects, the Metal Gear Solid 3 max rank requirements are easier than Metal Gear Solid 1, and in some other aspects, they're harder. This time around, players are expected to deal with enemies, including bosses in a non-lethal manner. This is because, unlike MGS1 where at least 11 kills are mandatory, MGS3 gives the player non-lethal weapons from the very start of the game. What I want to draw your attention to, however, is the total saves you are given. 25 are allowed in MGS3 compared to MGS1's 80 save limit. This is substantially less, and as mentioned earlier, this will definitely add to the difficulty of earning Foxhound rank at the end of your Extreme or Euro Extreme playthrough. Still, the extra 2 hours you are given over MGS1's 3 hour completion requirement, and the fact that you can achieve Foxhound on a New Game Plus save file, which gives you access to all of the camos you picked up previously, makes Metal Gear Solid 3 a fair challenge, all things considered. Now that you have those games and the requirements as a reference to go off of, let's finally get into the game that this video is all about. Metal Gear Solid 2's max rank requirements are for the most part pretty close to what you've seen so far. Playing on Extreme or Euro Extreme is as always required. MGS2 features a radar on or off option for all difficulties and you must make sure that it's off for the entirety of the playthrough. Players are expected to avoid killing any enemies, use no rations, complete the game with zero continues, cause no alerts other than the three mandatory alerts, all in under three hours. There's also a damage taken limit just like MGS3 and the inclusion of a unique metric that's being tracked, your shots fired count. More on that a little later. Later. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice that I haven't mentioned the save limit for MGS2 yet. That's because I want to make sure that you are sitting down before I reveal that information to you. Are you ready? 
Metal Gear Solid 2's big boss rank only allows 8 saves for the entirety of the game. Not 8 saves for the tanker chapter and then 8 more for the plant chapter, no. 8 saves total. And by the way, you cannot split this run up and complete tankers separately from plant or vice versa. This means that players must strategically spread out all 8 of their saves across their entire playthrough. If you save too much early on, the last leg of the game will be brutal since you'll be expected to handle some of the hardest sections in the entire game without being able to save. If you hold off and don't save often, one mistake is enough to erase minutes or potentially even hours of progress. This one metric is by far the most off putting aspect to a lot of players when it comes to earning big boss rank in Metal Gear Solid 2. Not only does it require intimate knowledge of the game, but also knowledge of your limits as a player. Knowing when to save is paramount to this run. Realistically, for most players, this means having to do the entirety of the tanker chapter without saving once. While it's nowhere near as difficult as some of the stuff you'll be doing during the plant chapter, there is one huge obstacle in your way. She is the first real filter of the game, and she sets the precedence of what you can expect going forward. I am, of course, talking about Olga. Olga is absolutely ruthless, and I will be the first to admit that it is completely unfair to throw such a tough boss fight at players so early on in the game. What makes her so hard? Well, for one, she's very quick and fires her weapon even quicker on the harder difficulties. Her encounter is a test of your ability to aim quickly and accurately while also avoiding gunfire. She also has two different routes she can run to at the very beginning of the fight, and depending on which direction you get, you'll have to change your strategy up, which gives the fight a tiny bit of RNG. If she goes left, the fight has the potential to be super easy as you can keep her in a stun lock loop and just headshot her down. If she goes right, you're f***ed. Just kidding, but the fight is much harder if you don't know how to deal with her when she starts in this direction. Oh, and did I mention that on European Extreme, she can one-shot you instantly if even one of her bullets connect? No? Well, now you know. Even on Extreme, she hits like an absolute truck. This boss fight is the first real test and it's thrown at you so early on in the game that most players will probably throw in the towel within 5 minutes of starting their run. In all honesty, the rest of the tanker chapter isn't too bad. Sneaking your way down to the engine room shouldn't be too difficult, and the next set of real challenges are the guard rush before the hold section and then the holds themselves. The guard rush is once again a test of your ability to aim while being shot at. Remember that only the M9 tranquilizer should be used here as we cannot kill any enemies. Once players make it to the holds, the riskiest area is holds too. This is because your way forward is blocked on either side, and some quick back-to-back holdups are needed to get through. Or you can crawl for ages through this crawl space and make it easier, albeit much slower for yourself. Holds 3 is the last section of the Tinker chapter, and all that's left to do now is take the required pictures of Ray and upload them to end this part of the nightmare. It's important to restate now that the tanker is over, that it's recommended for a vast majority of players to take on the entire tanker chapter without saving. That means doing everything we just went over damn near flawlessly before you should even think of saving for the very first time. It's also important to remember that the tanker chapter is only the very beginning. out of the frying pan and into the fire, as they say. The plant chapter is where the real challenge begins. As is the case on every difficulty starting with normal, players start the plant chapter weaponless and in this vulnerable state are expected to get past three guards undetected. There are plenty of ways to do this, but to someone new to high level Metal Gear, even something as seemingly simple as this may prove to be impossible. Remember, if you elect not to save here and mess up the first portion of the plant chapter, it means starting over and redoing the entire tanker chapter all over again. From here, the task is to first meet up with Pliskin to receive your first weapon, and then proceed to meet up with Stillman to start your first real challenge, this Bomb Disposal. Bomb. The Bomb Disposal portion of MGS2 will test your knowledge of the game by tasking you to find bombs placed around the various struts of the big shell. Players must find them and freeze them while staying out of the enemy's sight. Remember that currently, the only weapon available to us is the SOCOM we picked up from Pliskin, which means players must be crafty in the way that they maneuver throughout this section. The two most problematic struts for most new players are struts E and F. 
Strut E, and more specifically the parcel room, contains one of the most frustrating bombs players are expected to freeze. The bomb is located on a box that is moving around the entirety of the room via conveyor belts, meaning you have to locate the bomb as it's moving around and then wait at one of the conveyor belt entry points and hope that it's coming your way. Keep in mind there are three cameras and four guards in this room, so it's not as easy as just standing around waiting for the bomb to show up. Even if you know the exact timing and location of the bomb, getting to it is no easy task. You have to take out the guards and cameras in this room with precision and in the right order or else they'll wake up by the time you begin to freeze the bomb. Strut F is where the M9 is located and even just acquiring it is no easy task. This is because players only have the SOCOM at their disposal up until this point, which means dealing with the first guard in this section will require some finesse. Once the M9 is acquired, a whole new world opens up. However, even with the M9, this strut is still a pain. And don't forget there is still a bomb needing to be frozen here. In order to get to it, the other guards in this strut need to be dealt with. While not incredibly difficult, there is some risk here. Primarily not taking out the targets in the correct order and causing a disruption in patrol routes that can lead to guards investigating the area around them, or even worse, radioing in for backup. It's very easy to mess something up in either of these struts, which of course will result in having to reload your save and redo everything you've done from your first save up until this point. Now something I do want to mention in relation to the bomb disposal section is that technically you can go to strut F right away in order to pick up the M9 tranquilizer to give yourself more options for dealing with enemies in the other struts. Personally, I don't pick up the M9 until I go to strut F to freeze the bomb there, and I don't really recommend most players pick it up early either for one particular reason. Remember that shots fired metric I mentioned earlier? Well that is there to make sure you don't turn the game into too much of a shooting gallery with the tranquilizer handgun. The various tranquilizers you can use throughout the Metal Gear series can be pretty broken, meaning they are extremely overpowered and end up becoming the only weapon and means of getting rid of enemies that most players use. They're just too good. Metal Gear Solid 2's shots fired restriction is a way to deter players from abusing the M9. Every single shot you fire from the very beginning of the game all the way up until it ends is is tallied up and added to your overall shots fired amount. Keep in mind this also includes using a grenade and firing missiles. Players must make sure to stay under the 700 shot limit or else the big boss run is ruined. While all of the other metrics are pretty overt, this metric is the one that always sneaks up on new players attempting big boss rank. Keeping your shot count low starting as early as the tanker chapter and continuing to do so throughout the bomb disposal portion of the game and beyond is crucial especially since it's easy to start racking up the amount of ammo you use during some of the boss fights. Speaking of boss fights... If you thought Olga was as bad as it gets, think again. Bosses in Metal Gear Solid 2 are responsible for the death of many big boss rank dreams. Even the very first boss you encounter, Fortune, is significantly harder on Extreme and Euro Extreme than she is on the lower difficulties. The purpose of this fight isn't even to beat this boss, it's merely to survive. Even that may prove challenging as she shoots her railgun much faster on these difficulties and she can also potentially one-shot you with it. Not to mention players are expected to dodge the falling debris and parts of the stage at the same time. If you manage to get through her encounter, what's waiting for you next is one of the most annoying and difficult bosses you'll have to face in this run. Fat Man is deceivingly quick despite his name and can deal out a moderate amount of damage using a variety of attacks. The most difficult part of this fight and where most players fail is the bomb disposal mechanic. Fat Batman places two bombs right at the beginning of the fight, and the longer the fight goes on, the more bombs he places. These bombs blow up after a short while and must be frozen the same way you froze the bombs leading up to this point. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the amount of bombs he's placing when you consider you have to try and avoid his other attacks and also get your own attacks in all at the same time. This fight can also be the source of a ton of wasted ammo and shots. Don't forget about the ever-present shots fired restriction. This boss is where most players elect to create their first or second precious save file for good reason. If you manage to get through Fat Man, don't get too excited as the next boss is just just as lethal and annoying if not more so than Fat Man. The Harrier can feel downright impossible for someone attempting to get through it 
for the first time. Most of the Harrier's attacks can one-shot you, and if you don't know the various methods to avoid being hit, you're gonna have a bad time. This fight also has the potential to drag on and burn through a significant portion of the three hours you are given. And while you'll be using a missile launcher for most of the fight and only increasing your shots fired count slowly, if you're repeatedly not hitting your mark, those shots can add up. And if all of that wasn't enough, you're then expected to take a leap of faith to continue the rest of your run. If you fall, that means redoing the Harrier fight you just completed. After some well-deserved respite and a relaxing swimming section, you'll find yourself at the Vamp fight. Now, Vamp is the undisputed king of wasting your ammo and completely destroying your shots fired total. He's insanely quick, he has moments where he's seemingly invulnerable to damage, and when he submerges himself underwater, one of the fastest ways to get him to resurface is by shooting at the pool in front of you. All of these things are designed to waste your ammo, waste your time, and annoy you. Vamp can also lock you into place and render you unable to move with one of his attacks, and before you have a chance to figure out how to break loose, you're dead. Luckily, there's a method players can use to sort of cheese this fight and defeat Vamp non-lethally that involves hanging off the edge of the pool, baiting him over to you, and then repeatedly punching him over and over again until the fight is over. This method is amazing for making this fight much shorter, and more importantly, it helps keep shot count low. Defeating Vamp means you're heading toward probably the most hated portion of this entire game the Emma Escort. While not a boss and not particularly difficult, this section can be a bit boring. You're basically swimming through the underwater section you've done a couple times now, only this time you have Emma on your back. When you resurface, you have to navigate through maps populated with quite a few guards. If you manage to sneak your way through undetected, you'll end up at the sniping section in which players are expected to further babysit Emma as she slowly makes her way across the narrow platforms laid in front of her. This section can get a bit difficult as it's a test of prioritization, aim, and ammo conservation. You have to make sure to clear Emma's way of claymores while also making sure any guards in nearby towers are taken care of and also making sure to clear the skies of any flying drones. Knowing when to do what will come with time, so most players will fail their first few attempts. The game will also continuously throw additional ammo at you as long as you're in this section, so make sure not to get too trigger happy and run up that shot's fired count. The last part of the sniping section has you taking on Vamp for the second time. This is hardly a boss fight and not difficult at all. After sneaking around naked for a while, players will meet up with Snake who gives Raiden back his gear and will act as support for the next couple of sections. These sections are some of the most difficult in the entire game. I feel like I've said that a lot in this video. Either way, do you remember that small swimming section right before we're meant to meet up with Emma? Well, if you didn't pick up the body armor there, these sections are going to be a literal nightmare to get through. Even with the body armor, the constant onslaught of enemy fire, and the sheer amount of enemies that spawn as you try to make your way to the end of the room are sure to overwhelm even the best of players. This is also yet another section meant to try and rack up your shots fired count. There is a glitch here that helps end the nightmare nightmare sooner than intended, but what awaits you on the other side is just more punishment. There are even more Tengu to take care of here, and this encounter drags on for over 5 minutes. Players can use the sword here to help keep shots fired low, and there is another glitch that is able to be performed here that cuts the encounter's time down. Surely after everything players have experienced up until this point, there is no way there's anything brutal left, right? Wrong. Up next, you have two boss encounters, and the first is a gauntlet-style fight. This is, bar none, the most insanely difficult portion of this entire game. Players are tasked with fighting 20 Metal Gear Rays, you heard that correctly, in back-to-back -back succession. These rays all have attacks that can one-shot you. You take on one primary target, while also dealing with additional rays that attack you from around the arena you're fighting on. One false step is enough to force you to restart the entire encounter. Keep in mind this boss battle goes on for almost 10 minutes, and you have to play pretty much perfectly the entire time. Despite this technically not being the last boss, it is by far the hardest. Players who manage to get through the entire game sometimes end up quitting here after not being able to clear this fight. It's that hard. With enough patience, practice, and perseverance, defeating the rays is possible, and all that's left is Solidus. Well, you get tortured for a bit before that, but it's not a big deal. All jokes aside, Solidus is a major step down in difficulty compared to the rays. He's pretty slow, his attacks are all telegraphed, and you can block most of his most lethal attacks with your own sword. You can also bait him into only using one attack for the majority of the fight, which makes his encounter even easier. For all intents and purposes, once you get past the raise, the run is pretty much over. Solidus is just the last little annoyance before players can finally breathe easy and celebrate during the credits. 
If everything was done correctly, Big Boss Rank should be waiting for you once the credits are done rolling. This is no easy feat, and at least as of right now, it is the hardest max rank one can achieve in the entirety of the Metal Gear franchise. If you've claimed this rank, rest assured that you are truly worthy of the title of Big Boss. For those interested in attempting their very first Metal Gear Solid 2 Big Boss Rank, I made a step-by-step -step video guide that many people have used to successfully claim this prestigious rank. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.